This is the Sugar Beet Report, bringing you the latest information from NDSU throughout the sugar beet growing season. Sugar beet producers almost always welcome timely rains, but Circospora leaf spot also enjoys warm, moist conditions. Now is a great time to check the fields, according to Ashok Chanda, extension sugar beet pathologist with the University of Minnesota and Northwest Research and Outreach Center in Crookston, Minnesota. Ashuk, has the weather been favorable for Circospora development lately? And how much Circospora are we seeing in the fields? If you think about the week of July 24th, we received some rainfall, which means that we have the temperature and relative humidity that's perfect for Circospora to establish. You know, if you look at the daily infection values from July 24th to 27, they were very conducive for establishment of Circospora in the fields. It takes about 10 to 12 days from the time of perfect conditions for Cospora leaf spots to show up. This week would be really ideal for you to go and check you know, how much Cospora has developed in the fields. For example, all it takes is about 3% of the leaf tissue that's covered by Cospora leaf spot, and then uh, you can expect some economic damage you know, in terms of ear loss to Cospora. What fungicide application strategy should growers consider applying at this time of the season? Most growers are doing an amazing job this year to keep up with their fungicide applications. I know some of them started really early, just at the time of canopy closure, which is ideal to start circasperly spot you know, fungicide applications. The key thing to remember is tank mixing is critical, right? You have some fungicides which only work when they're on the leaf tissues, and some fungicides just enter the leaf tissues and they can provide some protection inside, right? That is the reason we have to combine a fungicide such as a triazole fungicide with a broad spectrum contact fungicide such as mancozeb or tin, right? That's where the tank mixing is critical. And the number two, when you're applying fungicides, adequate coverage, you know, for example, most of the Cospora develops in the lower part of the canopy. So you need to use at least 15 to 20 gallons per acre for the volume so that you can get adequate spray coverage. So to get better disease control. The third one is spray intervals, right? Let's say if you applied a DMI fungicide plus mancozeb, then you have at least you know 10 to 12 days until you put on your next application. But for some reason, you get like half to one inch rain, you know, the very next day, then all you have is the protection from the systemic one, which is the DMI fungicide. In those cases, you may need to narrow the spray intervals. But if you have only applied a contact fungicide, such as, you know, tin or a mancozeb, so you may need to even shorten the interval up to seven days so that you can uh, do a new application. Are you seeing any other leaf diseases this year? We are mainly finding Circospora leaf spot in the fields, but, you know, historically, this is kind of on the low levels this year. But in 2022, we saw some fields with alternaria and then stem phylum leaves spot at very low frequency, which we have not picked up anything this year. But if you're not sure what you're dealing with in your fields, you know, you can always send in a sample, the leaf sample, whatever spots that you're seeing, and we can help diagnose. And you should bring the samples to the Northwest Research and Outreach Center, Shigabit Pathology Lab in Crookston, Minnesota. Thanks, Ashok. Our guest has been Ashok Chanda, Extension Sugar Beet Pathologist with the University of Minnesota and Northwest Research and Outreach Center in Crookston, Minnesota. This is the Sugar Beet Report, bringing you the latest information from NDSU throughout the sugar beet growing season.